Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with John Guess, Chief Executive Officer of the Houston Museum of African American Culture. John Guess has a long history of activism. In the late 60s, he led protests that resulted in the founding of the Black Student Union at Johns Hopkins University. He is currently one of the driving forces behind the Houston Museum of African American Culture, which was founded to tell the rich story of the African American community in Houston and beyond. Mr. Guess has generously agreed to share some of his insights with us. I'd like to thank you, John, for joining us today. I'm more than pleased to be here. So this institution is in the process of being established. It is, bit, it is a history of 10 years, and you've come in to help drive this toward a, a uh, opening of a new facility. You've acquired a new facility, and, and you're renovating it right now. Uh, tell us a bit about the, the driving force, the impetus behind the founding of this new museum in Houston. Well, the former mayor of Houston, Lee Brown, uh, our first African-American mayor, um, had the idea of an African-American archival library, which was founded at the Gregory School and the Houston Museum of African-American Culture. These two uh, institutions manifest by the city in terms of the African-American library, which became the archival library, became part of the library, Houston library system, and was funded with public funds. On the uh, African-American Cultural Museum side of things, uh, that kind of stalled with a committee of business uh, 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 leaders, but it stalled for 10 years, at which point I was called in uh, to turn it around and, and get the effort going. And you don't come from a museum background yourself. Well, I do from the standpoint of being on the board uh, boards of the Contemporary Arts Museum for years. I do from being associated with the Glassell School, the Museum of Fine Arts Glassell School. Uh, so I, I've got some cred in the museum world. But your background is also in uh, consulting and in, in real estate and, and so on. So you brought that business sensibility toward uh, to this project at this at this critical juncture. Well, absolutely, that was exactly what was needed. That was the main impetus for me, really searching to find a building, the real estate background, find a building uh, in the museum district, which we did. Uh, that was an important milestone because for years people said, uh, for 10 years, like, so where's the building? Uh, that building sort of catalyzed uh, the community to get excited about this museum again. And before the, before the acquisition of this, uh, of this new facility, the museum, as so many founding museums are during the initial phases of their existence, was really a series of programs. It, it, it acted as a, as a virtual museum using other spaces. Well, not really. That came with the turnaround. Okay. Uh, there were a couple of uh, exhibits here and there, but for the most part, there wasn't a presentation of the museum and the community. Uh, that was part of the strategy that I, I came up with. The first part was to get a building. Uh, that was to catalyze people to say this could actually happen when people were starting to doubt that it could. And when we broke ground on that building, uh, I was amazed at how many people from the community, I mean, to show how much the community wanted this, this institution, it was, it was heartwarming. But the second phase of the second phase of the strategy was to, in fact, uh, put programs down in action so that right. people could see what it could be. Right from the beginning, regardless of how much money, you really had to go out and show people. Remember, we're in tight economic times and investment decisions. People decide to put money into things that they think can actually happen. Not the idea, and especially with this one where it had been going on for 10 years, we needed to show something. If you want to get people's attention, uh, the first thing you want to do is become part of a national discussion. And so we went out to become part of a national discussion. So we brought in Poet Laureate, uh, Pulitzer Prize winning uh, uh, Rita Dove. Uh, we brought in Tony Award winner Sarah Jones. Sarah did a, a, a wonderful uh, performance, a commissioned performance on African-American and Jewish relations. Uh, we sponsored in conjunction with Johns Hopkins Center of Africana Studies, uh, we sponsored a, a, a symposium on the African presence in Mexico. We're in Houston. There's no way that we exist without talking about Latin America. Uh, and that brought scholars from the United States and Mexico together here, which we, uh, the, the symposium was a wonderful thing, but their visits to high schools was even better. Talk a, a bit, for those of us who are, are less aware, of, of the history of African-American communities in this part of the country. 
It's interesting you bring that up. We're part of this whole celebration of Juneteenth, that emancipation of slaves uh, in this part of the country came late. We didn't know that the Civil War was over. We didn't know we'd emancipated. Here in Houston, the Gregory School uh, is located in the Fourth Ward, which is formerly Freedmanstown. They're our main partner, and they're the African American Archival Library. Freedmanstown is where African slaves, upon emancipation, uh, came to Houston, and it was the first free community of African Americans. So it, much like other parts of the, uh, of the country in the South, uh, this lateness uh, resulted in these new, young, freed uh, black people who uh, began to create communities that hadn't existed before. So in part, this uh, museum is tracing not only that journey, but is it a continuation of that journey? Well, the African American Archival Library, our partner, uh, is very much involved in that. I mean, I spend hours talking to people to say, come and bring your stories uh, so that we don't lose that past. Uh, uh, the Houston Museum of African American Culture, on the other hand, uh, we've defined, because of the Gregory School, we've defined as a contemporary museum. And that's a very important distinction because we deal with the issues of here and now, which bring us to multiculturalism. So our programming, deals not only with the past, but it also deals with contemporary issues. What are those issues? I like to say we bring in artists who have crossover appeal. And what that means is that we can bring in African-American artists, but they deal with issues and areas, which we'll talk about, uh, that impact not just African-Americans. So that a Sarah Jones can come in and talk about an issue that doesn't just impact African Americans. Or a Rita Dove can come in and talk about her poetry that impacts more than African Americans. Uh, those issues are women. Uh, those issues currently today are hip hop cultures, violence, politics, sports. The confluence of all of them in certain times and certain places that become eventful. And the museum is not conceived as a as a building where you hang paintings up? Well, no. We, you know, th this is a great conversation because we are redefining, we are that museum of the future, and certainly we're redefining what it means to be an African-American museum. We have actually up on the walls now, we have, uh, we have a show group that's going to be traveling to, uh, uh, to the University of Arkansas in June. We have upstairs in an upstairs gallery. Now, mind you, Part of our challenge here is that we're not yet open. Right. Uh, but for two years, we've sought to uh, give our community and the larger community a glimpse of what could be with proper funding. So we have upstairs the uh, senior show of the University of Houston's uh, art graphics department, which is a fantastic show. So now we're on the walls as well as the programming and performance. In terms of, of where you go from here, um, you have in this uh, city, an incredibly rich diversity of, of organizations um, that are dedicated to the arts um, and, um, and dedicated to uh, exhibiting the, both the visual and the performing arts. Um, these organizations have not been entirely neglectful of African American culture. How, how do you see this institution interacting uh, with those institutions? Well, Houston's a an extremely uh, cooperative and collaborative town in the arts community. And I've been involved uh, in a large number of arts organizations here for decades. Uh, my involvement alone suggests that I'm always looking to see that there's some presentation of African Americans. At the same time, you notice we have a, a, an art graphic show that has nothing to do with African Americans. Uh, and we continue to do that. Uh, it's a museum. In that way, we do what other museums, museums strive to do. We encourage communication and discourse. Now, the advantage that we have in terms of bringing traffic uh, to the museum district is that there is the fact that people will come to a museum that's their own. We will open to them the idea that there are other cultures out there because they'll see it in our building and they will walk down the street to the Asian Museum, they will walk down the street to the uh, Holocaust Museum, to the Children's Museum, to the Museum of Fine Arts, to the Contemporary Arts Museum, travel over to the Manil because now we're that doorway. Do you see the museum as having a role in cultivating not only African-American artists but also African-American uh, museum talent because there is 
sure. uh, a, a, a deficit uh, in the field right now of, of uh, curators and of museum directors who are of African American heritage. Well, I can tell you right off the bat, I mean, when I talk about the sustainability of this museum, because, you know, I'm, I'm in here to get it going, turn, to, turn it around, get it going. But I tell people that, you know, the staff that I hired uh, is the real sustainability of the museum. And that staff is incredibly talented. Uh, our director of programs, they're all young women, uh, and extremely talented. And everything that's happened with this museum, which has been extraordinary in the last uh, year and a half, has resulted from their work. And what that means is that they're an example for other people. Right. They're an encouragement. When you see people doing what you might want to do, or it'll pike your imagination to think to yourself, ah, that's a pretty neat job. Maybe I want to do it too. They're, they're wonderful examples. Now, you, now, you're currently involved in a renovation. When will that renovation be uh, completed? That depends on how well we make our, uh, we, we break through to our philanthropic community here. Uh, the one thing that I did want to do here was with this museum and redefining how African American museums come to exist is redefine the financing of them. Because most, if you look at most African American museums, the major ones are funded with a lot of government money. And yet, if you look at the other side of the fence, if you look at our major museums here, right. they're, not. they're not. And I wanted to be sure that if we're going to give, if I'm going to get excellent talent, give dynamic and superb programming, then I want the same people who, here in Houston, who give money to the Museum of Fine Arts and the Contemporary Arts Museum and the Manil and the Children's Museum and the Museum of Natural Science to give money to us too. Well, John, thank you so much for, for sharing your insights with us and thank you for founding this wonderful, wonderful institution. Oh, well, my pleasure. And uh, I have to thank Lee Brown and the people who actually originated that first uh, board uh, who actually came in to, uh, to, to get this institution started. I, I'm very happy to be a person who actually gets it off the ground. Thank you for your insights. Thanks a lot.